he's going to wear the crown. He did it tonight here at Homestead Miami Speedway. It's Car Camping World Truck Series. We're joined now uh, by the driver number 88. Black Label Bacon, Menard Swear, and Matt Craft. And Matt, obviously not the uh, the results you're looking for, but tell us a little bit about your uh, your evening. Really good at the beginning, and then was terrible there on the last run, and came up short. We'll go ahead, and uh, if you have questions for Matt, you raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. We'll go over here to Bob. And then he passed me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, did you? you have a good feeling when you, when you kept holding them up, or did you think it was just a matter of uh, uh, I kind of figured it was a matter of time. We were just really bad on that last run for whatever reason. We just went the wrong way for whatever reason. It just got really tight on that last run. The run before that it was just a little bit free, and on that last run it just got really tight on entry. Additional questions for Matt? Matt, congratulations Thank on you. the successful season. Champion, going to do everything in our power to represent NASCAR and Camping World uh, as best we can. You started 19th. At what point in the race did you realize that I've got a truck that maybe can win this championship? Yeah, you know, I was pretty conservative at the beginning of the race, just trying to take care of it and, uh, you know, not make any stupid mistakes. So, um, and then there was about probably 85 laps to go. I was like, okay, let's start picking them off here and just had a solid day in the pits. And, uh, you know, with about 50, 60 to go, I was like, okay, we got something here. And we were really catching the 88. It looked like he was pushing real bad. And uh, just so proud of these guys. Uh, you know, I can't thank everybody enough. I mean, I'm a small part of this deal. And, uh, you know, we executed like we needed to tonight. So thank the Blessed Mother and the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And uh, this is awesome. We're getting back to Wisconsin. That's Johnny Sauter. He's your 2016 champion. We'll continue our post-race media abilities of, uh, for the Ford EcoBoost 200. We're joined now. By the driver, the number 17 Red Horse Racing Toyota, Timothy Peters. Timothy, uh, solid run tonight. You looked like you were coming on strong there at the end, and we just kind of kind of ran out of laps a little bit early for you. Yeah, we ran out of laps for sure, but uh, I wished our our night would have uh, ended the way the race started for sure. Uh, we fired off really well. We had a really good balance. Um, had a little miscue in the pits, lost some track position, but we were able to gain it back. So, um, hey, all in all, we said in the beginning at Daytona that we wanted a shot. We had that down here. We came up just a little bit short. So uh, we know what we need to do over the off season and uh, can't wait for Daytona. Excellent. We'll open up the questions now for Timothy. If you'll raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. All right. Timothy, I think we've answered them all. So all right. congratulations on a very successful season. We're now joined by the driver of the number four JBL Toyota, Christopher Bell. Christopher, uh, exciting finish uh, to a great race. Uh, you were making some pretty spectacular moves there in those closing laps. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, uh, really thankful for all my guys on this number four team. They worked really hard because we were pretty far off to start the race, but they threw the kitchen sink at it, and we got a lot better. Just never. I uh, never was good enough to we at the end we got good enough to compete with you know the other two but the the 21 was really good so uh, my pit crew did an outstanding job they gave me a bunch of stop or spots on pit road and uh, just kind of what well, just wasn't good enough tonight if you have any questions for Christopher you raise your hand we'll go right here to Reed first then we'll go over here then we'll go over here Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Christopher, uh, obviously Kyle was in your ear a lot tonight. How helpful was that, and how you know how how did that help you throughout the course of the race? Uh, it's he's super helpful because he's you know he's so smart. He's a Cup champion, so to have him here, coaching coaching me, and and he was actually on the roof talking to me, and he could see everything, and so he could help me with my line. He could help Jerry with the truck, and uh, he was a big asset for us tonight. So we made a bunch of gains and. Um, I felt like if it was a 200 lap race, we might have been able to make more adjustments to get better because every stop we kept getting better and better and better. But, uh, you know, just just wasn't good enough. Let's go here. Yeah, Joey Barnes, Motorsports Tribune. Uh, Christopher, just get your take on what your journey was up to this point and then what you're going to take away from this championship battle. 
Well, it was really special to be a part of the first ever NASCAR Camping World uh, chase because at the beginning of the year, I felt like we'd be a championship contending team. But uh, after the way it started, or I should say before the year, and then after the year started, whenever we were uh, just, I was making mistakes, we were getting caught up in a bunch of crashes. And so uh, in the middle of the season, May, June, kind of we didn't even know if we were going to make the chase. And then we won a gateway and kind of locked ourselves in, but we didn't. We didn't continually have speed until the last half of the season. And uh, even when we got speed, we um, were, were never really contending for wins. So we just lacked a little bit. And uh, so I'm going to work really hard over this off season to become a better driver and uh, give it another shot next year. We'll go over here to the far right. Uh, Joe Allen Lee from Front Stretch back home. Uh, got to ask, you had a number of uh, encounters with the powder blue variety tonight. Um, uh, how badly did that change the uh, handling characteristics of your Tundra? Uh, I, I don't think it really affected my, my Tundra at all. It was really, yeah, I didn't notice any balance changes after I hit the wall. Just, uh, I don't think I ever really hit it too hard, just kind of kissed it. But uh, that's just the product of trying to get everything you can get here at Homestead. It's, a, it's my favorite racetrack for sure. Excellent. We'll go right here in the middle to Chris Knight. Chris Knight, Kitchens.com, Christopher. Despite all the obstacles that you had tonight, coming from the back to the front and then back to the front, a number of times you did, how proud are you finished third in the championship standings? Uh, it's how proud am I? You know, it's, <laughs> I don't know. I guess it kind of hasn't sunk in yet because at one point I'm pretty sure we were running around 20th and we were horrible. But, uh, you know, Jerry Baxter did an awesome job on the, on the pit box and got us closer and closer every time we stopped. So really thankful for that. And, uh, you know, to come out of here and after how the year started and to finish third in point, what points was something that was really, yeah, I felt like it was a really big accomplishment for us. So uh, it was a heck of a race there for kind of second, third, and fourth in points. So uh, hopefully the fans enjoyed it because I'll tell you what, one thing, I enjoyed it. That was definitely one of the most fun races I've ever ran in my life. And what did you learn tonight that maybe could help you if you're in the same position next year? Well, so this is the second time I've raced here. Uh, and second time that I've started the race really bad. So uh, we definitely got a lot better than what we did last year towards the end of the race. But uh, so just seat time here is everything. And uh, like I'm, I'm pretty good buddies with Kyle Larson. And uh, I don't think there's anybody better here than, than Kyle. So uh, just being able to talk to him. And he kind of gave me some pointers on how to run the wall here. And, uh, and he's just, it takes seat time. So I uh, got another race under my belt and excited to, I'm excited to come back. I wish we'd be raced here more than one time a year. We'll go to Bob. Bob Parker, CSN. What was the kind of the mood at KBM uh, in the sense of William Byron not making uh, the, you know, this final round? And, you know, just what do you think it did? Not that they need any more firing up for that team, but do you think it did? Well, it, first off, it was really it was a bummer seeing them not make it because they were obviously the class of the field the entire year long. So uh, it was heartbreaking to see them not be able to race for a driver championship. But uh, I don't think it affected them, obviously, because they showed up here. And I'm pretty sure they uh, won both practices, qualified on the pole, and won the race. So um, they've just got something going on there uh, pretty much all year long where they're really good. So. Uh, them blowing up was unfortunate, and it could not have been worse timing for them. Um, but they proved tonight that they were, uh, once again, the class of the field. Any additional questions for Christopher? Christopher, congratulations on a great season, and we look forward to seeing you in 2017. Thank you. Craig Jake to perfectly position hit by the they're, they're on the way right now. We can, we can go ahead and start, though. Hell out of there. <laughs> Letting the whole grandstand down on the racetrack. Oof. We're joined now by our 2016 NASCAR Camping World Truck Series owner champion, Kyle Busch, owner of Kyle Busch Motorsports. Uh, this is um, your fourth consecutive and fifth all-time NASCAR Camping World Truck Series owner's championship. Uh, you have the first team in NASCAR Camping World Truck Series history to win four consecutive championships and your five titles uh, are the most in series history as well. Uh, clearly, there's a, a pretty solid record of consistent, excellent performance there. So uh, talk a little bit about that and, and what this one means. 
Well, it means a lot, obviously, just to have everyone at Cobb Bush Motorsports there and all the years that we've been trying to do this and uh, be able to put five of them together in four in a row now. It's uh, really awesome and very special. I just feel so bad for William and, um, you know, the way this point situation worked out this year and having him eliminated last week at Phoenix and not having an opportunity to come out here and race for the title. Um, you know, it's frustrating, but yet um, rewarding on the same end that, that William and the guys, they didn't give up. They came out here and did and, and executed exactly what they wanted to do and set out to do. Uh, that was to win an owner's championship for, uh, for myself and Samantha. So um, truly uh, remarkable performance by William and Rudy this entire season. Uh, I mean, seven wins for a rookie is uh, remarkable. And, uh, you know, to, to come out here and to win this race on the stage that was set with everybody else out there was a lot of fun to watch. We'll take questions now for our owner's champion. We'll start here with Reed, and then we'll go to the back. Reed Spencer, NASCAR Wear Service. Kyle, um, having seen William all year now and win seven races, a rookie record, um, what's your projection in terms of his future in the sport? Um, well, if he stayed on my path, he'd be a hell of a lot more successful than he's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, he, he's going to do his own deal, so um, I, I wish him all the best. But truthfully, um, I mean, with the way that that uh, thanks, bud, with the way that William and, and Rudy have both executed this year, especially with William, with him kind of being as fresh as he is and, and not having the experience that some of these other guys have, and to have him go out there and just really excel and absorb and really take the series by storm this year, it's been really fun to watch. And um, you know, it's kind of scary to. Um, you know, to be teaching them all the things that I'm teaching them, but I was done about three weeks ago telling them any more, you know. So, um, no, he's, he's, he's done an awful, awful good job all season long. And uh, it's a shame to see him move on from the, from the Toyota, JGR, KBM family, but I wish him all the best and all the most success at, uh, at Juniors next year. He's going to have a lot of fun. We're also joined now by our race winner, William Byron, driver of the number nine Liberty University Toyota for Kyle Busch Motorsports, your seventh win of the season. Uh, and also uh, announced this evening, uh, winner of the Snoko Rookie of the Year Award as well, and uh, our race-winning crew chief, uh, Ryan Fugel. Uh, gentlemen, congratulations, and uh, talk a little bit about your, your seventh win uh, this evening, William. Uh, it, was, it was just amazing. We had a, a great truck coming here, uh, obviously expecting to be still in the Drivers' Championship, but uh, um, you know, when we came here, we had a fast truck. We executed throughout the day. It was just a one-day show today, so uh, unloaded really fast, and uh, Rudy just coached me up throughout practice, and, and we learned a lot of things um, before we came here to get ready from Kyle and Rudy and uh, even Eric. So uh, it's been just a really solid day for us and just an amazing year with these guys. They've uh, taught me so much and uh, really taken me to a new level. Rudy, when you uh, when you brought that trophy in here and set it on the table, it, it uh, it's come kind of become a, a common occurrence here lately. So, uh, talk a little bit about that. What that means for you to be a part of uh, and to lead this, uh, a part of this organization that's had such a, a, a consistent record of, of just superior performance. Yeah, it's uh, it's really bittersweet. Uh, start with the the sweet part is is that's four in a row. Um, you know, Kyle and myself and um, my race team. Um, mostly all the same guys. That's four, four uh, owners' championships in a row. One drivers' championship last year. Um, so, and, that, and then there's 50 some guys and girls back at KBM that that's that's what that's for. You know, they, they deserve it. You know, and, and they all work hard in their own way. And, uh, and then Kyle and Samantha, the best owners that I've ever worked for. And uh, they make everything, make it all go around, and make everything happy and um, make it easy. The the bitter part is is this kid's the champion, and um, he's not he's not going to get the big trophy. You know, Sauter's out there. You know, congrats to him. You know, he won the way it was supposed to win it, win it but uh, he, he deserves he deserves it. You know, this was his shot at it. You know, he's going to progress. He's going to progress all the way to Cup shortly, you know, and uh, he deserves everything he gets. But I feel we felt, our team felt worse, you know, terrible for him last week. You know, we had a, a goal to go win a championship, and uh, but – you know, it's uh, it's it's tough for him knowing that he's not going to get what he deserves to get. But we'll uh, take the fruits of uh, what we do have: seven wins and a owners' championship. We'll continue now with questions for our race winning and owners' championship winning team. If you'll get your hand up, Jim. We'll start here, and then we'll go right behind you. Jim Hunter, Motorsport.com. First for William. 
I don't know what your expectations were personally when you started this season, but um, how would you sum up what you have experienced this year? Um, I mean, it started out, I was like, man, this is going to be really hard. I mean, backing up what Eric did last year in this truck with this team, um, I knew I wanted Rudy. I knew when we sat down, we went to like Buffalo Wild Wings, talked a little bit. We knew right away uh, that we wanted to work together. And uh, he started coaching me the first Probably the week after that, I went to the Snowball Derby, and he was telling me things. And I just knew right away we had that trust level. So um, it just started really strong. We went and tested Atlanta. Um, and once we got to Kansas, we f were in a rhythm and got that first win. And things just kind of took off from there. Um, honestly, I was just hoping for one win. And that is just an expectation as a rookie. You never know what's going to happen. And thankfully, this team and myself were able to step up and do well this year. And for Rudy, uh, you mentioned this, and William mentioned it in Victory Lane, but after what happened last weekend, how difficult or how not difficult was it to get your team focused on coming right back and being able to do what you did tonight? Um, the group of guys I got, it wasn't hard. We were all pretty down um, for the ride back to the airplane. We all got on the airplane, and I remember it, you know, and the guy sitting behind me he goes, hey, is this right? He showed me a, a picture of somebody's tweet that said, here's the owner's chase. I'm like, okay, we're still, we got something to race for, you know? And, and, the, and we all started saying things where I can't stay here, say here, because we were all, you know, pretty, pretty bummed about what was going on, but we were all pretty happy we had something to go race for. So um, it, the focus of this group is, is amazing, you know, and, and preparing the truck that we prepared for this week is, it, it, I'm glad we, we got the victory. We'll continue in the back there. Uh, Kyle, this is uh, Greg Engel, CupScene.com. <clears throat> Other Cup guys have owned teams. How hard is it to manage this team and all the responsibilities you have on the Cup side? And I know you're going to be racing for many, 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 many years yourself. But is this your retirement? Is this what you're going to do, or is this what you want to do? Is be a team owner after your your seat time is done many years down the road? Uh, yeah, I guess I was. Probably a little premature in starting it if that's my retirement gig. Um, I mean, we're we're already six years in or something like that. So um, we've certainly uh, come a long ways from where we started, that's for sure. And um, these guys have just done a tremendous job at KBM, and it's fun. And uh, I enjoy doing what I'm doing. I enjoy coaching up some of these younger guys, although I, I <laughs> do tell them an awful lot. Um, but it helps them through the truck series, and um, you know it's all, it's fun to see their success level be as good as it is in our stuff, and to carry us on to championships, as well as having the opportunity for William to race for a championship this year, Eric last year, Bubba Wallace a couple of years ago. So, um, you know, we hope that uh, can continue on, and uh, we go into the future knowing that we've got uh, Christopher Bell next year, and uh, and William, uh, not William, excuse me, you're moving on. Uh, Noah Gragson and uh, some other guys. So uh, we'll just we'll keep feeding uh, these uh, ranks of NASCAR, and um, you know what what it instills for me past my retirement. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, maybe when I'm done racing Cup, if uh, if trucks are still around, I'll go run for a truck championship and complete the trifecta. That that might be kind of a a fun goal I think to have. <coughs> I think Brexton might beat him in the time he retires until he's about 18. <laughs> yeah. yeah, as soon as Brexton uh, is done with trucks and he wins a truck championship, we're shutting the baby down. So <laughs> you got about 15 years, Rudy. <laughs> we'll go here to the left to Joey. Joey Barnes, Motorsports Tribune. Kyle, um, just get your take real quick on um, Christopher Bell's race and also just this battle that he had over this chase stretch. What advantages it gives him in the next year since he's going to be with you again? Yeah, I think um, having Christopher learn all the things that he did this year, I know it's frustrating for him too to have or to see William be as successful as William's been and, and to not have that same success or to not be running nose to tail with William. But I feel like he's learned a, a tremendous amount. Uh, he just comes from a different background, you know. Uh, William coming from the pavement late model background and stuff like that maybe uh, allowed him to be more ready for the, the trucks than what Christopher's sprint car background allowed him to be ready for. So um, having the race here this year, though, it gives, it gives Christopher that, that, uh, that knowledge and experience of being in a dogfight there at the end with the 88 and the 17. I mean, he almost came up second in points, you know, and 
Uh, we were just off a little bit, probably through practice and, and then into the race. And so to learn those things about how far off he was tonight um, will only benefit him for next year's title run. Um, you know, so with the way the points are, get a win, get in the chase, and then after that, you just kind of focus on the rounds of the chase as you need to. And um, I think William did a fantastic job of executing that this year. Just unfortunate circumstances at Phoenix. Um, but we had two of them that were, that were right there throughout uh, all the rounds. And then we got Christopher here. So um, again, he, he was uh, <clears throat> a little off in the beginning of the race, but um, definitely came on there at the end and got a lot better and, and, and showed a lot of perseverance of battling uh, an ill handling truck early on. Gentlemen, congratulations on a very successful season and best luck next year. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We are now joined by the championship winning owner and crew chief, Mr. Maury Gallagher, owner of GMS Racing. This is GMS Racing's first NASCAR Camping World Truck Series Driver Championship uh, since the team made its series debut in 2013. And for Mr. Joe Shear Jr., our driver's champion winning crew chief, uh, this is your first NASCAR Camping World Truck Series Championship as well. Your previous best standings finish uh, was a second with a driver by the name of Johnny Sauter in 2011. So, gentlemen, congratulations. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what this means for you as, as a team owner and, and a crew chief. Well, thank you all very much. Appreciate the, uh, the time. Uh, hard to put into words. Uh, sports is, competitive sports like this at the highest level is something that is rare and difficult to do. Um, certainly everyone aspires to it, but uh, attaining it is, is uh, uh, you don't quite understand until you get there how hard it is. Um, I can't say enough about the investment by Joe on my right, Johnny, uh, the whole team. Uh, Mike Beam certainly has to be at the head of the list with the credits. Uh, Mike's been 43 years in this business, uh, has worked with some of the best all time. He brings an intensity that is second to none, uh, an intensity you need to bring it uh, home. And um, Tom Ackerman, working with him, uh, we worked with ECR, their motors were terrific this year. Um, all the parts came together, but at the end of the day, Johnny had to deliver the goods. Starting, I think, 18th, was he 18th? 19th. 19th? Oh, sorry, I missed one. <laughs> um, he worked it to the front and did what he had to do. Uh, that's determination to a, to a fault. Um, I can't be, couldn't be happier for Johnny and his family. Uh, I'm not that, well uh, informed on the backgrounds. I do know, having said that, that the Sauter family has been in racing for many moons, and I was chatting with uh, someone uh, with the NASCAR uh, record book in mind and said this is the first NASCAR win for the Sauter family. So that, I couldn't be happier for Johnny and, and obviously the rest of the team. Joe, it's gotta feel, uh, it's gotta feel pretty special for you as well. Yeah, of course. You know, me and Johnny have been, uh, together for years and our families have been together for years and we've you know raced against each other and uh we've won a championship before and we've uh you know just became best friends and worked really hard and been determined and um i'm like almost lost for words this is like really huge and special and uh as, as like Maury says in sports, it's, it's amazing how hard it is and how long it takes to achieve your goals and, and stuff that you've been working for all your life. And when you finally do it, it's like a big relief. And uh, I'm so happy to be with Maury and GMS and Mike Beam and Tom Ackerman and all the guys that work there. Uh, I'm so proud that they brought me into their organization and gave me and Johnny back together as it, and it gave us a chance to do this. And I really got a good bunch of guys and they worked hard and working hard achieves these goals. And I'm so proud to be part of the, that gang. And I'm really lost for words. This is exciting. This is amazing. The, 
you know, that this is the top of the deal to win in NASCAR, and um, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go ahead and open it up to questions so you can have to put together a lot more words. We'll go up front to, uh, <laughs> to Zach first. Then we'll go to Bob. Then we'll uh, Zach Albert, NASCAR.com, uh, from Maury. Um, Johnny was super appreciative to you guys over the team radio on the cool down lap. And it, how easy was, did the deal come together to bring him to GMS? And what has he meant to your organization in just a short time being with you guys? Um, Johnny is uh, uh, just terrific people. Um, we had talked about it actually two years ago about doing it. And, and uh, it's been a building process for the last couple of years. And, and we felt that, uh, and with the encouragement of Chevrolet, I might add, we needed to bring a quality, top quality driver in. I mean, we have good drivers. I think Spencer's shown up pretty, pretty good this year. Obviously, Ben Kennedy got into the chase and won. Uh, we've had Kyle Larson, he can pass for a driver. A um, few of those types. Uh, uh, so, but Johnny was that kind of constant. Uh, he shows up with the experience, and I call him the old salt. Um, and you just can't put a price on, you know, that kind of, I've been there, done that. He was terrific with the younger guys, uh, shared. Couldn't ask for a better teammate. And, uh, you know, it's an investment. Uh, you do it, and you hope to have the outcome we had. And so um, I, you know, it, this, you'd like to think that every investment pays off. It's hard in this business, but uh, this one has paid off in spades. So, yeah, no, hats off to Johnny, and, and uh, he'll be back next year, and we're, oh, you'll be seeing me about a year from now, I hope. We'll go over here to Bob, and then we'll just keep going to the right. <laughs> 15 years ago, was there ever a point where you thought, man, Johnny's a great driver, he's going to win a lot of races, but he's just not going to win a NASCAR championship? Uh, I guess I never really thought of it. Yeah, I, we just always go race to race to win, to win everything that we can, and we gave it, we always give it 110 percent. So we just, it falls where it falls. We we always try, but. It takes a lot of effort to do this, and, and it takes a lot of people and the people that you surround yourself to get to this point in life. And, and thank God I got hooked up with, you know, Maury and, and GMS and all the guys. And, and it, me and Johnny always click. We just, it's putting the rest of the people together that makes it happen. And we, uh, we had this feeling when we, we came here, and we, we just kept working hard and kept working hard. and. And we uh, we achieved it. We'll continue over here to the right. Joseph Walken, FrontStretch.com. Maury, when you started this team, did you expect to have this much success just three years into it, being able to recruit big name drivers and expanding to a four truck team? Sure. Doesn't everybody do it this way? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I didn't know enough to know. Um, a couple of years ago, I couldn't spell car. You know, I'm, I think I'm on C now. Um, it's, I've, I'm in the business of building businesses for the most part, and I've started a lot of companies in my life. And, you know, you have to go places that other people don't think you should go or can't go. And more importantly, you have to go there with the right people. And while I didn't expect to get to this place perhaps this fast, I, I, I certainly didn't think we would never get there. Um, you know, it's, it's just been a great process. We, we bought our facility in Statesville, 160,000 square feet. I think if you looked at us now, Mike's put together, uh, some people walk in there and say we have a small cup shop. Um, we built 25 frames this year. Those frames that you see out there running around on the track are the handiwork of Mike Beam and uh, his, his fab team. Um, put those components together with good crew chiefs, obviously good drivers, ECR motors, you know, you got to have the good power. Um, and, you know, it's come at a reasonable pace. Um, I think the other thing, too, is uh, when I got started a couple years ago, I was frustrated as hell about not having good stuff compared to particularly the Toyotas out there, the Fords. Uh, in 14, when we got going, it was, it was tough sledding, uh, new nose and everything on the trucks. So, uh, you know, it's surprising, but not that surprising, particularly when you get to know Mr. Beam. You ever get into that uh, grill of his and uh, the intensity factor that comes with him? Um, he was not easy to talk to tonight before the race. <laughs> so um, it's all hats. By the way, uh, hats off to NASCAR. I don't, 
again, a bit of an outsider, this format is terrific. Um, you know, I'm glad they brought it to us this year. We all got to experiment with the caution clock and, and those things, but uh, I think NASCAR has done a great job uh, putting all this together and keeping the drama. Well, what, about the last second or third lap, you didn't know who was going to win. Uh, you can't do much better than that. So, anyway. Any additional questions for our championship? Oh, we'll go right here to Chris, then we'll go right back over here to the right. Chris9catchfence.com, congratulations to you guys. Maury, how, I know you're really busy out in Las Vegas with the Legion Air and whatnot. How involved are you with the day-to-day -day operations of GMS Racing, um, being as busy as you are? Um, I'm, I'm a distant owner, so to speak. Um, I'm certainly uh, talking to Mike a lot about structural stuff. You know, we're frankly, a lot of the discussion now is about what we're doing next year. Um, but Mike day-to-day -day is, that's his call. I mean, he's, he's put the package together. He's put the personnel together. Uh, he's the man among men that's done this day-to-day uh, -day with uh, the approach and the like. Certainly, um, I've been able to help him in a lot of structural business things that would kind of follow my bailiwick. But um, now hats off to Mike, Tom Ackerman, uh, you know, building, wind tunnel, all the technical work to get it done. Uh, it's really been his, his doing. We didn't trash you too bad. <laughs> I, it wouldn't be the first time. No, I'm just kidding. Before we get to your question, I want to uh, welcome to the stage our 2016 NASCAR Camping World Truck Series champion, driver of the number 21 GMS Racing Chevrolet Silverado, Mr. Johnny Sauter. Johnny, uh, you finished the 2016 season with three wins, 12 top fives, 19 top tens, one pole position and one gigantic trophy. Talk to us about tonight and what this championship means. Well, um, this championship means a lot, obviously. Um, I just, you know, I, I don't think it's completely sank in quite yet, but, uh, you know, it wouldn't be possible without these two guys sitting next to me, that's for sure. Um, I can remember last September when I flew to Las Vegas and the Gallagher family brought me to their house and cooked me a wonderful meal and said, this is our goals and this is what we want to do. and and. Uh, you know, when I went and checked out the shop and, and saw the, you know, their ultimate vision for, for where they wanted GMS Racing to be, I knew it was something that I wanted to be a part of. So um, what a remarkable year um, to start off with a win at Daytona. Um, you know, you mentioned 19 top 10s. I, I can remember three of those races we were con in contention to win. One of them uh, running second and the other and blew a right front tire and um, had decent speed all year. And we really hit our stride here at the end of the year um, when it really counted. Um, I'm not going to lie, today I was a little bit nervous when we qualified uh, 19th, but uh, I knew that we'd race good. Uh, we, the trucks are just so good. Um, every, all the product that they're building at GMS Racing is just good stuff. And, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to have Chevrolet power under the hood. And um, we executed like we needed to. Had a solid pit stops tonight. We made some positions up uh, on the racetrack like we needed to. And here we are. Uh, great year. Couldn't be more proud. We'll continue with questions. We'll go to the far right, and then we'll go to Jerry. Uh, Tom Bowles, Front Stretch. I had a question for Maury, but Johnny, since you're here, um, congratulations. Uh, what do you think you had the past year at GMS? You spent so many years driving for such a solid team at Thor Sport. What do you think you had in this year that you didn't have at Thor Sport where you were able to get it done here? Um, well, I mean, it's not just one thing. It's a lot of little things, if you want to know the truth. Um, you know, I... To be honest with you, when I talked to Mike Beam on the phone the first time, my wife was in the hospital um, having a baby, and I was in the parking deck um, talking to Mike on the phone about next year or the following year. So, um, you know, the killer instinct that Mike has, you know, all he says is, you know, I want to win, and we need to kick their butts, and, and it's very motivating, you know, um, for, for me anyway. I, I like to hear that kind of talk. So um, having said that, you know, I, I think it was very important for me to – get back in a Chevrolet. Um, I felt very strongly about that, um, being a GM kid. So, um, but, you know, people is a, a big ingredient. I mean, there's just a lot of little things. I could sit here all night and talk about it, but um, it's just the whole package. I just felt very comfortable, um, you know, like I said, about meeting the Gallagher family and all this, and I'm not sitting up here blowing smoke. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I just, I felt very comfortable that night and uh, knew that this was something I wanted to be a part of. We're gonna stay over here and then we're gonna come to you, Jerry. Albino front stretch uh, for Johnny. Uh, last year, when you announced this deal in October, did you expect to have results this quick? Honestly, yes. Um, you know, as I mentioned, you know, the 
any successful organization in racing that I've ever seen, they, they surround themselves with, with people, um, people that, you know, work very hard and, and, you know, do the right things, I guess, a lot of times. So, um, you know, I, I can sit here and say that I don't think I would have ever made this kind of move if I didn't feel comfortable with it. Um, when you see what, what we're building, I've said this a thousand times, but if, if you check out what, you know, GMS Racing in Statesville, North Carolina has to offer, I mean, the way that they're going about it, building our own chassis in-house, um, you know, hanging our own bodies in-house. Uh, obviously, we had ECR horsepower all this year. Um, you know, they, they executed on the pit crew with, with the Ganassi guys. I mean, all that stuff was just top-notch. So, um, you know, it took us a little while in the middle part of the summer to get it, get it rolling. We were consistent, knocking down top tens and a few top fives here and there. But, um, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm not shocked at all to be sitting here tonight. I, I, I feel that strongly about the people that we have. We'll go to Jerry and then Bob. Jerry Jordan. Kicking the tires and performance racing network. Johnny, I talked with David Pepper after the race, and he said he was proud of you. And uh, said you, you know, obviously you performed well over at, at GMS, but now now you you know they've got a target to shoot at. Any words uh, for those guys uh, coming here after last year? Um, for those guys, meaning Thorsport. not really. I mean, I look, I had a, a great time at Thorsport. Um, Duke and Rhonda Thorsten are great people, and. Um, you know they've they've been in the sport for a long time, so um, you know and they've had a lot of success. And I, you know, this was just something that I felt like I, you know, wanted to try. So, um, you know, I'm glad that we're here, sitting here, celebrating a championship. But next year, uh, you know, the goal is to win ten races and and you know ultimately get Maury an owners championship. We'll go to Bob then Chris. Uh, Bob Hawk, Chris, ESPN. When you came to NASCAR after winning the ASA title. Do you think you were going to win a <coughs> championship quickly? And can you kind of put this whole, you know, 15 years later and every I mean, you ran push cars for like three teams in a season. You had, cup, you had the cup experiences you've had and, and several years in the truck series just to get to this point. Yeah, I mean, it's been a long time. Um, had some successful years along the way. Had some years that, uh, you know, you kind of want to forget about, I guess, um, you know, for various reasons. but. Uh, you know, we've been pretty competitive, you know, in the truck series, and, and quite frankly, I felt like I was competitive uh, in, in the Bush series and the Xfinity series or whatever, but, um, and had some decent runs in Cup, but, you know, it's very hard to get all the pieces of the puzzle put together. You know, it's not just the driver, you know what I mean? It's, uh, you know, Jimmy Johnson, perfect example. You know, you know, did okay in ASA, you know, did okay in the Bush series, but, you know, when he, got his guys and, and got the, you know, with Hendricks and all that, they came alive or, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's all about putting the pieces of the puzzle together and it, you know, sometimes it works out and, and I've always said timing is everything and, uh, you know, I feel like uh, the timing is good where I'm at right now. We'll go here in the middle to Chris Knight. Chris Knight, catchwins.com. Congratulations, Johnny. Thank you. What can we expect uh, from your championship speech on Monday? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of stuttering, um, <laughs> a lot of um, I, I don't know, I, uh, I'm not very good at that stuff, I don't think, so um, having said that, um, you know, we got, uh, you know, good PR people that are going to help me uh, try to m nestle through all that, but, uh, you know, just going to thank uh, some people in the past that have been pretty influential in getting me here, and, and obviously, um, just be thankful. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm humbled to be a champion in, the, in, in NASCAR. So, um, you know, I'm just going to thank all the right people. I mean, this is a, I'm very much a small percentage of, of what's been accomplished. And we need to acknowledge and, and thank the people that made this possible. We'll stay in the middle. Go to Jim Utter. Jim Utter, motorsport.com. Kind of going back to Bob's question, with the amount of time that you spent in your career in NASCAR, do you feel the driver's championship is something that you kind of wanted to validate all the effort that you've spent and also uh, that your family has spent in, in NASCAR competition? Yeah, I've won a driver's championship for 15 years. <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, of course, everybody wants to be a champion. You want to win races ultimately, and, and you want to be in the hunt. So um, like tonight's deal I think with the chase was pretty exciting I mean there was a point there where we ran I don't know 50 laps and we would have finished fourth in points and we picked them off one at a time one at a time one at a time so um, and going back to my family I you know I've said this for a couple weeks now that you know this championship would mean a lot 
I don't know what it would mean to me until it really happened, but um, for my family, just validation for, I don't know that they need validation, but um, it's just cool. You know, uh, my dad had raced for 40 years, you know. Uh, I think that's what Michael Waltrip said. You can remember a NASCAR, a solder in NASCAR for over 40 years, but um, so it, it's just cool. Um, to grow up in a racing family, go to so many racetracks throughout the Midwest, and uh, you know, to be a, a champion in, in one of the top three NASCAR divisions, that's just a, that's something that I hope the family can enjoy. Gentlemen, congratulations on the championship season, and uh, we look forward to celebrating with you again on Monday night. Sounds Thank good. You. We'll be there. Thank you. Oh, it's What's up? It's